All right, let's go on the beat to one place to beat the heat. That's poolside, where we find our guys, our Chuck, Chuck Garfine and Gordon Wittenmeyer at the baseball winter meetings. Okay, gentlemen, our Chuck, I'll start with you. Is that the shallow end of the pool, and is that where we can find both Cubs and White Sox management, or are they over at the kiddie pool? Because the deep end of the pool is 11 years and $300 million for a shortstop. Yeah, right now, I mean, obviously the winter meetings just got started, but Gordon, do you hear that? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that all day. <laughs> it's been very quiet. I'm not saying the White Sox aren't doing anything but nothing has materialized. We're just getting started. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, the doesn't sound like the White Sox are going to spend much money. The Cubs, Gordon. Well, Trey Turner chased the Cubs out of the deep end, and then we came here and chased both teams out of the shallow way. So wow. I don't know where they're going to wind up. Look, honestly, <laughs> I, I've, I've had uh, they, the Cubs have to sign. Uh, one of these shortstops and they have to spend they've promised to spend there's three of them left Carlos Correa is the big fish he's, he's not around here <laughs> but if Trey Turner's getting 11 years and 300 million we're looking at 8 to 10 and 320 plus for Correa and maybe 11 plus that, keep in mind that with Trey Turner, the 11 years has more to, more about getting the annual average value of that contract down under 30. But look at Corey Seager last year, getting 10 years and 325 million. Correa's looking for at least that. And then you, now you, then you look at the Bogarts and the Swansons of the world, their market just went up too. So if the Cubs are serious, and if they're not blowing smoke on their fans, then they, they're going to have to spend some money. They're going to have to go big for one of these guys. It's a, uh, Honestly, if they don't get one of these guys, it's a failed offseason. Chuck, let's talk about the White Sox. Mike Clevenger said, I signed where I wanted to be, and that roster is set. Do you agree with that, or is there still, boy, they've got a hole they've got to figure out? Oh, I mean, they need a second baseman. They need a right fielder. They need a left fielder. I mean, those are the three big uh, things that they need. The catching market is interesting. You got Sean Murphy, you got Danny Jansen. Those are trade candidates. Uh, Yasmani Grandal in the last year of his deal. Uh, they could probably use a better defensive catcher. So uh, that's something to watch as well. The White Sox have pretty much said they're coming here. If not here, certainly the offseason. It's more going to be via trade those are the moves they're going to make obviously clevenger was an exception with the free agent signing but that's what they're looking for and we'll see what happens here uh today tomorrow i'll say this about the Sox: they've got a pretty good track record of making things happen at the winter meetings so i'm optimistic i'm not promising anything but i'm feeling there's a good chance they do something here even though the trade market is pretty silent this whole off season maybe it picks up here at the winter meetings yeah you know, your White Sox and their track record, Yeah, they've won a couple of off-seasons. I'm, I'm trying to remember how far it's been since they won in October. Certainly not since the last time right. they won an off-season. So you don't have to win the off-season, you don't have to win the winter meetings, but you'd like them to make a move. At least I would like to see Maybe them Maybe win move. more than one game in October if you get oh, there, too. It, We're at the winter meetings. We're not, this isn't the playoffs. Look, man, I'm, I'm watching your guys, too. <laughs> I mean, while I'm sitting around waiting for whatever the Cubs think they might spend on, yeah. I don't know what your guys are doing. Yeah, you sound like Cap. Cap, does he sound like you? Yeah, a little bit. In terms of pitching, do you see the Sox being willing to deal a guy like Giolito because he's got one year left and then he's a free agent? He turned down an extension a year ago. How do you think they approached Giolito this offseason? You know, I know there's been a lot of chatter on social media and amongst fans about them trading Giolito, and I think that would not be the smart move for the White Sox to make. If you wanted to trade him last offseason, that would be the time. His market value with one year left on his contract is the lowest it's been uh, since probably 2018, 2017. So I cannot see the White Sox. It wouldn't. Because if you're trading him, you're not going to get as much for him. And then you got to find someone to replace Lucas Giolito. I think he's going to be inspired and motivated to have a big season because his last year on his deal. I'd keep him. I would not trade Giolito. 
Gordon, what do you think the Cubs do in terms of starting pitching? Are they in on Kode Senga, the Japanese star, or are they looking at Taiwan Walker? Give us the latest on Cubs and starting pitching. Yeah, I think the likeliest area of free agency that the Cubs are going to land on starting pitching is going to be that second tier. I think Kode Senga is in play, but I think he's got a really strong market, and I don't know how high, how big the Cubs want to go in that market. With uh, the Verlander deal and the DeGrom deals in the, in the last few days, uh, a lot of high AAV short, short uh, uh, years, uh, although DeGrom got five years, which, which is crazy. Rod Rodon wants six plus uh, I think he's probably out as far as the Cubs are concerned. So Senga's probably the top of the Cubs market. And then from there, you go to guys like Jamison Tyon, who they've been linked to, and that second tier. So again, a lot there to play out because there's a lot of teams with money and there's a lot of teams with need. Every year, teams, lots of teams have need for starting pitching. And so it's a musical chairs. There's more teams than there are really high quality guys out there. Cubs, Cubs if they want, can get as aggressive as they want. We've said this I don't know how many times. That's why I say if they don't land maybe a couple of significant guys on good, strong free agent deals, it's, it's a failed offseason. Chuck, I was told the Cubs offered 2 and 40 to Jose Abreu. He got 3 and 60 from Houston. Why not take the extra guaranteed money? I completely understand it. Is it a done deal that Andrew Vaughn is your first baseman, or could the White Sox go in a different direction there? I, I, you can't say absolutes with anything, almost anything in you know the offseason, but I'd say 99.8% that Andrew Vaughn's going to be their first baseman. I mean, they drafted him, high first-round pick, and they were playing him out of position. They decided to basically let... Abreu walk out the door because they've got Andrew Vaughn ready to go and play first base. So he's going to be their first baseman unless something happens here at this hotel or something over the next couple of months where it's an offer they can't refuse. I just don't see that happening. I would be shocked if Andrew Vaughn is not the White Sox starting first baseman on opening day. All right, last day, Gordon. We see Turner off the board, 11 years, 300 million to the Phillies. Are the shortstops going to start flying off the board now and the Cubs have got to get their deal done in San Diego? Or could there be guys still there 30 days from now? 30 days from now, I'm not sure. But keep in mind that two of these guys are represented by Scott Boris, Carlos Correa and Xander Bogarts. I thought coming in that Dansby Swanson might be the first of the four dominoes to fall and that Trey Turner would be the other one. Well, we see Trey Turner go. The Phillies decided to go big. Why not, you know, coming off the pennant? And it's a perfect fit for them. So I would suspect that if this triggers another domino okay, in the short run, it's Swanson. But that said, we'll see what happens with Bogarts. He's, the difference between Bogarts and Correa is Correa doesn't have a qualifying offer attached to him, so there's no draft pick compensation attached to him. He's, he's much more attractive that way, and he's two years younger. He's going to be looking to maximize like even Trey Turner didn't. And so Bogarts is a little bit older, but a lot of teams really love him. There's a ton of teams interested in him right now. So that could take time to play out, and we know how Boris works. Bo Boris plays out the market. Yeah, and Cap, three years ago, the last winter meetings was here in San Diego. You and I interviewed Scott Boris right here. Yes. He was holding the cards with a whole lot of, of his clients three years ago. He's got it again here today. Carlos Rodon, one of them. He's got a whole yeah. bunch of them. So he's kind of controlling a lot of the activity here for the big guys. And we have, you know, we're just getting started here. I think tonight you'll start seeing more things. But I think tomorrow will be the day where you'll see a lot more activity here at the winter meetings. But Just give these guys a day to kind of get settled and you'll see some things happening. And to your point, and to your point, Cap, on this week, Boris at those 29, yeah. 2019 winter meetings did $800 million of contracts of over a billion he did that off season this week. Mm. Basically, a couple of them came a couple days later, but the agreements were set this week. By the way, is, is Rick yeah, or Jed tonight, in that shallow this, this end of the pool there? I think one's trying to dunk the other. That's why you can't see him. Yeah, I don't see him. All right, we'll talk to you I guys again say tomorrow. Something, but you know what? I'm not going to say it.
All right. Run, run the credit card bill, right. Cap, and have a great night. Appreciate you. We're going to sign him. Okay. It's your credit card, right? We're signing Oh, yeah, name? yeah, yeah, Cap. Thanks, Cap. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Drinks on Cap. Thanks to David Kaplan. I appreciate that. Thanks. Enjoy.